All right, hello and welcome to an update to the Slayer Lightning Strike Dorianis prototype build. I've done quite a few changes to it since the last video, and uh, I've tried out even more changes. I've been stuck in POB hell for the last, like, yesterday. I think I spent, like, 12 hours straight literally POBing and testing things out. <laughs> with a little to show for it, actually, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, there's so much stuff that you can do in this league, and it's very, very cool. But, yeah, as you can see right now, um, mapping this character feels so good. Uh, so, if you look at the footage right here, uh, we can basically permanently spam our volume strike while mapping. <laughs> and we can also have permanent soul eater while mapping. So, basically, a very zoomy character. It's still just as tanky, if not potentially more tanky in such certain ways, and uh, you do a lot of damage, and uh, yeah, I've been farming like 80 to 100% Del Eid at tier 17 maps with this, and it's been feeling really good. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, yeah, it, it doesn't, like, it's not immortal, I'm not gonna claim it's immortal, but it is very tanky, and it does a lot of damage, it's very speedy, and it feels good. So, um, yeah. You can do some wacky stuff this week, but yeah, let's go over sort of all the different changes I've done here, so. This is the character currently, you can see this immediately, some changes stand out. First of all, we are not using the Mogzotl's shield anymore, I'm using a Squire. The reason behind this is, uh, and also using a Dagger. The reason behind this is the same thing, it's this enchant. So this enchant only exists on daggers, um, this is the rune enchant. Uh, if you look at the claw runes, unfortunately, are they are all pretty much terrible. Uh, those claws really didn't get much love at all. Uh, whereas daggers got a lot of really good ones, or two really good ones, and one of them is this one. So this is socketed vol skills, have 100% reduced soul game prevention duration. So this is a mouthful, um, but basically every single vault skill in the game has a soul game prevention duration, which stops you from spamming it, basically. <laughs> it's, it's sort of a way of balancing it out. So whenever you use a vault skill, it sort of goes on cooldown, and during that cooldown, which is the soul game prevention period, it can't gain souls. So basically it forces you to wait between vault skill uses, basically. Uh, this enchant completely removes that, because 100% reduce means you don't get one. You don't have a soul game prevention duration. The second you use a vault skill, it'll start collecting souls again, which means that during mapping, um, like this thing does not need a lot of souls. It's 20 soul or it's 40 souls to, to use. Uh, yeah, it's, it's very easy to, uh, to fill up and use, so. Yeah, very, very powerful enchant there because it lets you just spam Vault Ice Strike while mapping. On single target, it doesn't really let you do that because you're not getting souls fast enough for that, unfortunately. Um, there is ways of getting to work single target, and I'll talk about that later because that is mostly of what I've been uh, trying to PB the last few days. But this is why I wanted to switch to a Squire, obviously, because this is socketed Vault Skills. So this only applies to the Vault Skills uh, present in the uh, Dagger and the Shield. So this is the only way of getting this enchant working on Six Link. So I had to do uh, Squire. Now, obviously, that means I dropped the Mug's Auto Shield. You might think that means I dropped the um, Elmo Shift defensive layer, but that is not true. We're still getting it. It's just slightly different. So now I've sought over from using a light Lethal Pride. I'm now instead of using a Glorious Vanity in order to get Divine Flesh. So Divine Flesh was one of the keystones already present on the Mug's Auto shield. However, now I'm taking it manually because obviously I'm not using the shield anymore, so this uh, makes us that all damage you take bypasses your energy shield, which doesn't do anything for us because I don't have any anyway. And then half the elemental damage taken is taken as chaos damage, and then it gives you 5 max chaos res. So it shifts half the elemental damage taken, and then the other half, I'm currently shifting with uh, Sublime Vision, so this is a period of fire Sublime Vision. Uh, these are pretty expensive. I, the, I just, I'm using this because I had one, because I picked one up sort of investment-wise, because I saw, the, saw one for 10 divs, so I just sniped it up. Um, but you can use a pure device one just as well, and those are like 2 div, I think, right now. Um, I don't know, maybe people will catch on eventually and they'll get more expensive, but they're literally the exact same thing, this interaction, because uh, Divine Flesh shifts half the just generic elemental damage taken, so you can shift whatever other half you want, and it's fine. But yeah, so pure device or fire would be work for this. So this shifts uh, the you know thirty percent of the rainer, and then the the remaining twenty is as the last video uh, from a watcher's eye with the pure fire mod. So. That is right now how I'm shifting. So again, I'm still only taking fire and chaos damage. Um, it is actually a little bit weaker doing this than doing like tempered by war because tempered by war uh, would give me ninety auras to uh, to you know all that damage versus this where, where half the damage taken is chaos and then I only have right now I have 80 max chaos res so obviously the full damage sort of balances out to an average between my 90 fire res and my 80 chaos res so on average I have what 85 max res so it's a little bit weaker than tempered by war because tempered by war would make it so that all my elemental damage taken gets mitigated by 90% fire res because it shifts all of it into, into fire instead of uh, dividing it up with chaos but um that would have stricter res requirements, because as I went through in the last video, uh, it requires you to have a bunch more res on gear and stuff like that in order to fix your stuff. And I wouldn't be able to support that right now, so it'd be a big damage loss. And then also, there's some cool interactions with the uh, Divine Flesh. I'll go over here in a little bit uh, defensively. Uh, but yeah, that's how I'm shifting, so that is part of the defensive layers. Now, there's some other stuff as well. So obviously, Sublime Vision has a downside to it, right? Sublime Vision makes it so that you can't use any auras besides Period of Fire, which is, you know, used to be a pretty big deal. Um, Pierce Leagues, this league, I mean, the only other aura I was really using was Wrath. 
And dropping that, to be fair, kind of sucks because that is like 25-ish percent damage, which is quite a lot, but I think it's manageable. And you can still use reservation skills that weren't auras. So um, the stuff I'm using besides Purifier, I'm using Hail of Thunder, so that's not an aura. And you can still use that just fine. It's not like a huge thing or whatever, but... Um, it just gives you a little bit of added uh, lightning damage, which is nice. And then I'm using uh, Octic Armor also, which is not an aura. Um, Octic Armor, this is not a huge deal, but it gives you, uh, when you're stationary, less fizz damage taken and less fire damage taken from hits. So it's a little bit of hit mitigation. It's kind of nice, because obviously we are taking a lot of, like, half the amount of damage we take is fire damage, so that part applies a lot. And then fizz damage reduction is one of the, the big things this build needs, because fizz DR is, is tricky to get nowadays. So I think it's pretty good. It obviously doesn't do much in while mapping, because as you saw from the clip, the mapping experience of this build right now is, like, you just run around placing down all lightning strikes and, and get still leader and feel good. <laughs> so you're not stationary often, but for like bossing and stuff when you're st stationary. And as far as I know, uh, this actually activates pretty much exactly when you start spamming your skills. So you, it, there's not much of a weight or anything uh, to becoming stationary with this. So it's pretty good, I think. It's, it's definitely worth using at least. It's pretty good. And then I'm also using Aspect of the Crab as a defensive layer. So you might notice that I'm no longer taking uh, Iron Reflexes. So I'm not converting my evasion to armor anymore. I just have straight evasion. So I have about 10k evasion right now, which is not a huge amount or even a large amount, but it's fine. Um, and then Aspect of the Crab is a nice little added bit of uh, Fizz DR. So if you're not familiar, this is one of the bestiary aspects. So you can use uh, bestiary recipes in order to put this stat on your gear. It's a suffix. With the Black Morgan um, beast introduced uh, last league, I believe, and it's still in now, you can get level 30 aspects, which are a little bit of a buffed version. They're still the same uh, reservation or whatever. There's slightly stronger effects. Um, but I can read you what Aspect of the Crab does. So basically, it's a reservation skill. While it's active, you get uh, a stacking buff on you, crab barriers, and each buff gives you 2% Fizz DR. It's a generic Fizz damage reduction, so I believe that stacks additively with uh, endurance charges, which is nice. Uh, so each one gives you 2%, So uh, and the max of a level 30 as with the crab is 12. I believe a level 20 before was a 10 max, so a little bit of buff there. Uh, and then whenever you take a hit, uh, or whenever you um, take fizz damage from it, I believe, uh, all the, the crab berries are all lost, and they start building up again. So basically it's like a building up shield, you know, you, you build up stacks, and then you get hit, and then it, it starts building up again. Sort of Wind Dancer-esque in, in how it plays. Obviously that's why uh, I dropped Iron Reflexes, because this works very well with Evasion, because it lets you, if it hits, then lets the crab berries stack up more and more. Um, from the footage I've been looking at over myself mapping, I'm actually pretty happy with this aura. It's pretty consistently above 10 stacks, um, so it's quite strong, actually. Um, it's quite a nice little defensive layer. I think it's definitely worth the suffix slot on the helmet and the little bit of reservation, especially since, obviously, um, we're not using much, al much else for the reservation stuff. And aspect of the crab is also not an aura, so it does work with the sublime vision, which is nice. As you can see, it's currently active. <laughs> now, my final reservation skill is uh, maybe a little surprising. I'm actually using auto-exertion, so this is the thing added this league in order to automate war cries to specifically exert them. Uh, this is kind of interesting, because basically, so, since I'm using um, two pretty cheap amulets that I'll go over in a bit, but because they're both quite cheap and easily to get, you can get really good corruptions on them very cheaply. So this one has plus one curse, well, both of them right now have plus one curse because I think that's the best one. Uh, but I wanted to uh, you know, leverage this because curses are really strong. Problem is, for this build where you're setting the enemy's resistance to minus 200%, just straight up, um, most curses don't do anything because most of them are just like minus X amount of res, right? Like frostbite, early weak, all that stuff. So those don't do anything, but we can still use uh, punishment. Punishment is quite a powerful curse. Uh, it gives a uh, curse enemy 60% increased damage taken while no life so this is functionally you know you can because this is low life is 50 percent it's functionally like 30 percent more damage a little bit less math doesn't quite work out that way because you have coal but um yeah you know that's the way i like to think about it not super accurate but it's sort of like that yeah, it gives you a lot of damage when they're on uh, lower the lower half of their HP, and then they also get debilitated when they hit, which is just like a damage debuff, so they t deal less damage. So it's quite a nice little curse, but I obviously don't want to manually cast it because uh, manually casting curses is for losers. <laughs> uh, so there's a new little nice way of automating curses. So what you can do is you can auto exert battle mages cry if you're using a melee skill. So what battle mages cry does, uh, there's a buff to it, but you don't get that because you're using auto exertion, which shuts off the actual buff portion. But the exert portion still works. So uh, battle mages cry exerts the next five melee attacks, so those count your lightning strikes, and uh, each one of those that get exerted it will trigger a supported spell with their first melee hit. So basically, uh, since I'm auto exerting this, I'm pretty much always have exertion us up. So basically, whenever a lightning strike hits a target with its melee 
proportion they get cursed with uh, punishment. I think that he, this even should cu- uh, curse in um, in like an AOE around it, right? Because it just casts a spell. So uh, yeah, it's a really nice little curse and it's set up here for not all our reservations. It's like what, 15% or whatever uh, a reservation. So it's quite cheap. It works really well. And uh, yeah, I can recommend if you are looking for a, another source of a curse. And obviously the first curse we're using is still Assassin's Mark. So uh, if you only have one curse, I would only use uh, Assassin's Mark. Uh, punishment, while nice, is not better than Assassin's Mark. Assassin's Mark is very strong. But uh, yeah, this is a very nice little bit of tech in order to automate uh, curses. So uh, big recommend there. As for other defenses, of course, I have, um, this is now a Mage Blood build because I formed up a Mage Blood. I was, I'm using a Progenesis. Those things are expensive, but they're very good defensively. Um, then, um, yeah, this is, I, I now sort of drew out Cache, which is quite good as well. No more downtime to charges. Uh, yeah, having your Cache is like, numerically, obviously it doesn't show up in PUB very well, but um, you immediately feel the lack of ramp compared to the previous setups in the previous videos. Uh, this is a very late game setup. I'm going to provide a POBs, and I'll go over them in the POB section of this video as well. I'll have a sort of step-by-step upgrade paths for this if you want to follow along, because I already have those POBs prepped, so I can just add those in. Uh, basically, a POB from... Uh, after the last, the previous video of like the day three gear, the really early, a little bit upgrade from that, but without Ralakesh, Mageblood, or Progenesis. So that's like the, the step up from that. And then having an additional PB after that with Ralakesh and Progenesis, and then one uh, of this final setup with a uh, Mageblood and stuff. So if you do want to follow along, you can look at how I did it that way and, and maybe you can see sort of what I did. Um, but yeah. So that's super cool. So yeah, again, we are using uh, the six link lightning strike is now in the dagger and the shield, uh, and that lets us spam vault lightning strike to our heart's contents during maps, and that's very good. Now, as for defense, other defensive layers, there's this amulet. So this is what I was running uh, before. I you can see I'm just using Zervi's heart right now, which gives soul leader. I'll go with this in a little bit, but um, most of the time I've been using this. This is tainted pact. So this is another like. 2C unique or something, you know, people don't use this right now, but it's very powerful, such an else So this reads, it has a bunch of irrelevant text on it, and then it reads, taking chaos damage over time heals you instead while leeching life. Now this seems a little bit um, specific and not really that good, maybe, but it is a very powerful effect because, again, with Divine Flesh, since we are shifting half of all elemental damage taken, including dots, into chaos, every single damage over time we take is going to be half chaos damage, which means that half is going to heal with this amulet, which makes you basically immune to elemental damage over time. Um, which is very powerful. <laughs> and obviously, chaos damage over time is also just irrelevant. So this basically makes it so that even, and of course, I actually have lower chaos rates than Elyrez, so I think, because this this heal happens after the resistance uh, mitigations have been calculated, so I think, I think actually I do, I heal from, from <laughs> elemental damage over time uh, with this ammo on while leeching. It's very powerful. It's actually really, uh, really hilarious using this against like Shaper or something and then just standing in the beam and just getting healed by it. Um, it's a very, very powerful effect on this. And obviously, uh, the conditional of while leeching life, we are slayers, we have overleech and increase increased leech instance uh, length. They last for 10 seconds instead of 5, I believe. So it's pretty easy to always have that conditional up. And if it isn't up, you can just swap to a flask like this with this craft, which is 15% of damage taken from hits is leashed as life during effect. Uh, this craft comes from Cinder Swallow Urns, so just unveil those until you get it. Um, this isn't that great unless you're using this amulet, because again, it's just a leech instance, so it, it, pr- it goes towards the cap of leech instances, which usually, if you are leeching, you always have that cap anyway. So unless you have some other interaction with this, you probably don't notice it. Uh, without this amulet, but with this amulet on, um, this makes it so that you're pretty much always counting as leeching, which makes this conditional just always apply, which makes you very tanky. So it's a very, very good amulet for this build and this setup, and I was using this for most of the time, and also it's very cheap, so it's very good, easy to get like a good crop on it like this one. So that's very cool. But yes, I'm not using that right now. I'm using Zervi's Heart. So Zervi's Heart, again, another amulet, which just has three irrelevant lines on it. Uh, but then the final line is very good. So it gains Soul Eater for 20 seconds when you use a Vol skill. Um, so you can imagine this being very good while mapping for this build, because we are spamming Vault Lightning Strike everywhere, and that feels very good. <laughs> so it, it functionally gives you permanent Soul Eater. Uh, when you use, if you, say, have Soul Eater up with the max amount of stacks, and then you press a Vault skill again, it doesn't uh, wipe that Soul Eater or whatever. It stays up. I don't think it refreshes the duration, uh, to be fair, so it is eventually going to run out, but then you just, you're always spamming, so it'll just be up again. But you might think this is counterintuitive, because Soul Eater, the way Soul Eater works is it, it, it eats the souls from the elements you kill, right? So, and they go into that before your Vol skills, so while you have Soul Eater active, those souls aren't going into your Vol skills and charting those up. It is instead being eaten by the buff and then giving you the attack speed and, and whatever from it. Um, so, it's a little bit counterintuitive with this setup, but... The nice part about this is that Soul Eater has a max stack of 45. I don't know if that's a recent change or whatever, but um, right now, yeah, it stacks up to 45 and then it stops. So after it reaches 45, it stops consuming souls, which means that you'll start building up souls again, which, you know, it it reaches 45, like, immediately in the map. (laughs) So functionally, you barely feel uh, the downside of this eating up your evolved souls. Uh, It basically just gives you Soul Eater um, permanently for for all maps, which is... um, 
yeah, that's a lot of attack speed you get for free there. It's, it's a lot of fun to play with. You basically you get a headhunter for free, which is uh, <laughs> very cool. It's not for free. Uh, this thing has the line on it, items and gems have 50% increased attribute requirements, which is a tricky one, but um, with the glory of Kalana jewelry, you can get rings like this. So you can see that this has a juicy dexinate roll, alongside the, the minus res and stuff like that. So uh, this is how I've been solving this. I have a juicy dexinate roll on this thing, and then I have a strength roll on this, and that is enough to uh, where I can support this. But it is tricky to fit in, so if, if you know you want to be doing something similar to this, and you can't fit this in, then just use um, just use Tate Impact. It's really, really, really good. Um, but it is very fun having Zoe Leader, I'm not gonna lie, it feels great. It gives you a lot of damage as well for the, the Delhi maps and stuff, yeah, it just, oof, what a fun amulet. Uh, yeah, I really like this setup for mapping, like, you're so zoomy, just fast normally, and then uh, you perma Soul Leader, you perma all skills, oh, god damn, it feels good. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, as for other changes, um, I'm using clusters now, so there's just general attack clusters, you know, a Motion Prowess, Fear the Fury, Fear of the Fight, you know, the, the standard good one. Uh, here's a crit cluster for some extra crit. Uh, here I'm using Fan of Flames as one of the nodes because this gives you plus one proj. I don't know if I really need this actually because I'm getting plus one proj here. Um, I think as long as you have, uh, let's see how many projects I have right now. I have six. I think it's as long as you have five or more, it's fine because I, I think if you have four, it's like bad, right? Because the uh, the way the projectile split up is like kind of feels kind of bad. But uh, but yeah. Uh, but yeah. So that's that. Let's see here. I'm still using Forbidden Flesh and Flames. So uh, some additional sources of damage reduction we're getting is getting getting 45 from this node right here, and then I'm getting uh, the Adrenaline node from Champion. I'm stealing that with Forbidden Jewels. The Adrenaline node reads that whenever you reach low life. Uh, you get Adrenaline for 20 seconds. Adrenaline gives you 100% attack damage and like 30 move speed attack speed or maybe 20 move speed attack speed. Um, one of those two. And then it gives you 10% Fizz DR as well. So it's a very powerful buff and uh, it, it just triggers whenever you're at low life. Uh, so the way I'm doing that is I'm using Corrupting Fever. It's not here for anything but just the life cost on it. So I have it with some high uh, mana cost multiplier support gems. So these don't do anything but I just increase the cost of this thing. So I have it set right now with this level to where it costs almost exactly half my life. So I press this button. I get immediately get Adrenaline adrenaline and uh, uh yeah i get all the buffs from it so you get even faster and you get more tanky so that is an additional source of fizz damage reduction and some more damage and move speed so that feels really good you just press that uh, periodically while mapping and it's super good and then i'm also again that stacks with fortify that stacks with the endurance charges with the crab barriers uh, it's a lot of like additional sources of fizz dr stacking that isn't necessarily armor and i think it actually works quite well for the defense of the character i think uh, that's pretty solid it makes for a Quite tanky. It's not like I wouldn't say it's an immortal character. Uh, you can certainly like if you. I don't think this character can reasonably tank a Uber Shaper Slam. Maybe with Steel Skin Up you can do it, but uh, stuff like that I wouldn't. Just, I, I just get out of the way. Um, but it's uh, it's still very. It feels very good to play. Like the cover is really good with the Leech and like the the region from the Flask and then the Fizzyar is very good still. And the elemental damage reduction is obviously very very high as well. So it, it, I think it feels super good. And after being able to do tier 17s, uh, like 100% Delhi and stuff, it's um, yeah, it feels great. So uh, solid defenses, I think. Not like immortal or whatever. Like I don't know if I would do this in Valos. I mean maybe with Taint Pact you could do some Valos stuff. But um, yeah, I don't know. But yeah, it's cool. I guess that's that's what I'm getting to. Now, as far as stuff, so how am I getting rage? Oh, I figured I mentioned this. So if you look at my gloves here, I'm getting this gain two rage on attack hit implicit on the gloves. So this is searing exoc implicit. Uh, so this usually is where you get your additional strikes. Uh, so this is where you get, you know, you strike two additional enemies. Uh, I'm instead getting that from the tree. So I'm getting the attack mastery for uh, one additional target for my strikes. Uh, you need at least one source of this because uh, it'll do double hits. So it functionally gives you a bunch of damage. I don't think there's a big difference uh, DPS wise from targets one additional and two additional. Uh, maybe someone more familiar with strike skills can inform me that, but I imagine it's probably just like a, like a clear thing. Um, so I think it's fine with just one for now. Uh, but the reason why I really want this implicit on gloves versus having the additional targets is uh, the warning is important. It's, it's a pretty rare stat this actually. This is gain two rage on attack hit. If you look at all the rage nodes on the tree, and I don't know why it's divided up like this, it's actually really strange. I don't really get it. Um, but like all the rage node on the tree that gives you rage on hit is rage on melee hit. So this is rage on melee hit here. There's a rage that's over here, rage on melee hit. If you get the lethal pride jewel and you have some rage nodes on there, those are on melee hit. So that means that the only hits out of your attacks that would give you rage is the actual initial strike, that thing. The projectiles don't give you anything if you just have rage on melee hit. However, if you get the rage on attack hits that, that works on everything. So then suddenly now your projectiles give you rage, your melee hit gives you rage, everything gives you rage, basically. And importantly, this is really a big distinction because when you're just running around mapping and you're just putting down volume strikes, if you don't have rage on attack hit, you basically don't get any rage and you're missing out on 30% multiplicator damage, right? So you kind of need one source of rage on attack hit. Now it's kind of rare, this stat uh, versus melee hit. It's really weird. So you can get it on glove implicit like this. You can get it on the rage support gem. That thing gives you three rage on attack hit. And there's also the berserker's ascendancy small passives for some reason give you rage on attack hit. I don't know why it's like this. Uh, 
I feel like this distinction is really strange and confusing. I feel like all nodes should just be the same. I either just commit to them all being melee or all being attack. Like, uh, yeah, I don't really, <laughs> I don't get this divide. It doesn't make sense to me, but this is the way it works. So right now, uh, getting it on gloves is really premium because I was actually using the rage support gem before and that's kind of a piece of shit. Otherwise, uh, besides that set, so get, getting the implants on the gloves lets me use another support gem in the, uh, the weapon, which is really nice. So those supports I'm using, you know, Return Proj and all this other stuff. I think eventually you'd probably want to do Nimbus for this. Um, I don't have one because it's very expensive and not been able to form one up just yet. I'm kind of close. 63? Okay, I'm halfway. <laughs> Nimbus is are expensive this league. Um, but the big problem with Nimbus is obviously I would have to give up one of these rings and maybe that means I would have to drop Xerophys because it'd be very hard to get my stat requirements. I think you can make a really juicy ring that would make Xerophys viable Um just singular ring salt because I guess I would only need the 60 strength from this, so I'd need like triple. You'd probably get like one of the high strings where you can get four suffixes. Yeah, I think I might try and craft that in the future, but um, right now I wouldn't be able to fit it in anyway, so. But I'm deforming up to that. Obviously, getting uh, Nimbus would be really good because you could drop Return Proj and you get another damage support gem in there. It's like a huge amount of damage, actually. Um, getting a Nimbus, it's like probably like double damage or some absurd thing, but yeah, that's probably the next big upgrade, but uh, that will require a bit of work for sure because I would uh, need to make a really, really good ring, but yeah, so that is uh, that stuff. Otherwise, on the year, not really anything special. It's just like generically good stats, um, suppression, life, uh, stuff like that. Uh, again, Relic Kesh gives us the charges now, which is really nice. Uh, I'm using Steel Skin for the guard skill. I'm currently automating it, which I don't love, uh, but I'm trying it out. I haven't actually tried automation out since I didn't play last league, so I'm trying it out. It's, it's okay. I would prefer a damage take, cast some damage taking setup. I think it's, I mean, it's probably just better, but you know, testing this out with a, with more duration is pretty good. Well, it also, even if you're not doing uh, the Squire stuff, uh, just having this enchant on, and like having the six link in your chest or whatever be lightning like strike, you can get use this enchant to get permanent vol haste, permanent vol molten shell, permanent vol clarity if you want everything to be free. Uh, it's very powerful. Um, obviously, all the rune enchants are very powerful. Uh, well, not all of them, but there are some huge ones. Um, but this is one of the really good ones. Uh, having permanent vol skills is uh, is kind of crazy. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah. So even without having the squire set up, it's it's very good. You can just do like permanent vol haste and be very zoomy, and that feels great. Uh, but yeah, so that's very cool. As for the stuff, uh, I'm using uh, a lot of meaning here. This is pretty good cheap jewel. I don't think it's... I can check the price right now. Yeah, lightning damage is like 3 div right now, so it's pretty good, and we're taking a lot of notes here, so this actually it's like... I think it's like 80% more damage or something. It's actually a really good jewel um, in this spot, uh, so I'm doing that, and then uh, yeah, again, Gold's Vanity, Clusters... Still using the uh, the medium thread of hope here, which is pretty good. And then in here, I'm using a Deer's Rain, which is kind of nice with the setup. I think it's worth doing. So it gives you increased skill for duration on the line, which gives you a chance to regain consumed souls, which is quite nice. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I've been having fun with this. Let's use spam a little bit more. Otherwise, no, no big changes to the tree other than that. Okay, so here's the current POB of the character, uh, if you wanted to have a look. So this is the Current iteration, uh, I think I've gotten everything in there. So you can see that this is the pretty tanky. It's not you know huge numbers, but this is without guard skills. So if you want, you know, if you want the, the juiced up numbers, you can you can toggle skills, get on. Looks all better. <laughs> and also do the full DPS. This is like 50 mil without anything, without soul. Leader. If you have like soul leader, you, you can put that in here somewhere. Where's that? It's like over here. So at full soul leader stacks, this goes up to you know 83 mil while napping. Not boss DPS unfortunately, because of soul leader, that thing tends to fall off unless the boss has adds. But yeah, so it's uh, it's pretty good. I, I've been it feels great. I mean, it's not like numbers wise, it's not the really hugest, but this still has ways to scale. I mean, again, Nimbus I think doubles the damage functionally. Um, yeah, a bunch of stuff like it's yeah. I think this has plenty of ways to go, so I'm very excited to keep building it. Feels it's one of the best mappers I played in in so long. Like man, it feels good to, to map with this thing. Uh, <laughs> so much fun. Uh, yeah, I've really been enjoying it. So these these are the current numbers. I can show you some of the previous steps, and I'll provide all the the things in the um in the description as well. So let's look at some of the previous iterations of the build, sort of before I got it to this stage. So this is the stage I was at uh, a little bit after the previous video on the character. Uh, so this is, uh, again, I'm using, this is the setup with Mog's Auto. So this is very similar to the last setup I showed. It's still Tides of Time, it's not Mage Blood, it doesn't have a Predestance or anything, or Rail Cache. So similar to last time, but I'm not using, um, in this setup, I'm not using the Taste of Hate setup. I decided to swap it back over to Tempered by War. So I mentioned, um, you know, this, I, I basically didn't do this in the original update video because it was like day three of the day. I barely had any resources and it's pretty uh, pricey in order to get the, the resists to match up with this. But I made it a priority to do this because um, I noticed the lack, especially during tier 17s, uh, those holes in the defense of the first initial, like, budget version or whatever, uh, where you take a little bit of the fire and lightning dot damage that you would normally fully shift over since you're not fully shifting it over, uh, that is actually more noticeable than you think in tier 17s and that took a couple deaths. So I made it a priority to uh, switch over back to Temporary War. So I did that, I uh, switched over to Temporary War. 
I'm using uh, some permanent flask to tide to time and some flask investments. I'm taking some of these flask nodes here, some flask nodes here, uh, these nodes are here, and then I believe I have some tattoos for duration. Uh, this means that some, most of my flasks are permanent. You can see if you hover over flasks in POB, you can see that a flask uptime 100% there. That means it's just always active once you press it. So uh, the setup had perma flask, pretty much not all of them are perma, but they're basically perma, like 71%, yeah. I had a version of this with slightly more permanent flasks, uh, which I'll show you here in a second, but... Uh, but yeah, still numbers are still very good. This is like this was plenty enough to. This is exactly the setup I used to farm tier 17s on. They were 20% early, but they weren't more than that. But still, this was super comfortable for tier 17 stuff. Um, as for jewels again, just just a lethal pride, and then uh, let's see, just a rare piece of shit jewel for corrupted blood immunity. Ancestral vision. We're doing ancestral vision because uh, I'm not doing um, real cash boots, so I don't need storm shroud. So we're doing that with the rare boots in order to get ailment immune. And you really do want to get Amulet Moon eventually. Uh, this is something that I noticed as well during tier 17, so you can't really skip out on that. You need it, even if uh, the elemental shift makes it so that damaging elements don't really uh, do much to you. But yeah, then Third of Hope up here to get some nodes. It's very similar to their... The qualities look very similar, but um, yeah, this is what I was doing uh, initially after that initial update video, and then we can move forward a step in time. So this is with uh, this is after I procured Relicious Impatience and Progenesis. So what I did here was I invested even more into Flask Node. So here I'm getting a Flask Medium Cluster with Fasting and Spike Concoction. Fasting gives you more charges and some move speed, which is nice. Well, move speed is well, I don't know Flask, so I guess the move speed is relevant, but it gives you more charges. And then a Spike Concoction gives you Alchemist's Genius, which is a buff that gives you more Flask effect and I believe a bit more uptime. And the same Flask setup with the nodes here. Um, I believe this means meant that I have, yeah, on this setup you have permanent uh, Amethyst, you have permanent Progenesis, uh, which is also gets buffed by the Tides of Time. Tides of Time is really good with Progenesis, by the way. A very, very strong belt for this, because uh, the additional Flask effect, scaling Flask effect on Progenesis, they're sort of kind of broken. Uh, but gives you a permanent Progenesis, have, you have permanent Ruby Flask uh, with increased effect on it, actually, which is kind of cool. So this increased effect on this Ruby Flask, alongside Tides of Time's Flask effect, and the Flask effect I'm getting on the tree and the Alchemist Genius buffs means that uh, this flask alone makes you uh, fully shock avoidance uh, capped, which means that with one storm shroud, uh, this flask alone gives you ailment immunity, which is permanently with the setup. It's kind of nice. And then just a like, grandma of the flasks uh, for other buffs, which are also pretty much permanent. I believe, um, yeah, the silver flask isn't permanent, really. That's the only one that's like has pretty bad uptime, but that's okay. Uh, otherwise, basically all other gears pretty similar. I just switched from using Ancestral Vision because I'm using Relicious Impatience in the boost slot, so uh, I don't have any additional source of ailment or ailment avoidance, so I had to. Um, I had to switch to Storm Shroud, but uh, yeah, that's what I did. Uh, here, I am also still using the Forbidden, Forbidden Flesh and Flame Jewels for the Adrenaline Node. If you want to read it, read it it's this note right here. So you also get free Intimidate off of this, which is kind of nice. Um, otherwise, the tree looks pretty similar. I don't think I changed much around, but yeah, still using Tempo by War on the setup. And uh, yeah, this is actually tree has looked pretty similar for a while, but yeah, oh yeah, on this setup, I also used, um, this is where I started using Iron Reflexes, so here I'm high going full armor, so we have not a lot of armor, to be fair, but just enough to where, basically, I was getting annoyed by stuns, so I just got uh, Unwavering Sands, and then, you know, since you can't evade anyway, might as well get um, my Iron Reflexes, so, uh, you know. Not a huge amount of armor, but again, we are getting the Fizz DR from our um, generic, you know, Fortify Adrenaline. And you charge stuff. Um, this might even be, yeah, this is without guard skills or with a guard skill. It's actually even a little bit tankier than my end game version right now, mitigation wise. Um, so it's pretty, pretty good. Uh, but yeah, so that's this version of the build. And yeah, then this is the uh, the current one, which I'm currently building up. So yeah, you can see they're all kind of similar, but I'll, I'll add all these into the description if you want to look at all the different steps. Uh, and you can see sort of uh, where I took the character and how I took it as I was upgrading it and stuff like that. So. The first thing you might think to yourself when you hear someone say that they are using infinite vol skills is how crazy vol lightning strike is probably going to be on a single target, right? Because if you can spam vol skills on a target, then you can just put down a million vol lightning strikes on the screen and they'll just do like billions of damage. And yes, this is theoretically doable this league because this enchant. Because usually the big um, restrictor there is the soul gate prevention duration, which stops you from doing that. Uh, because usually you can just use hate forge, which is these gloves right here. So these make it so that your vol attack skills use rage instead of requiring souls. So suddenly you just need to regenerate rage at a point, you know, fast enough to where you can sustain, um, you know, you, it's, it basically makes so that rather than being limited by, you know, souls or uh, soul game prevention duration or anything like that. Uh, with this enchant and these gloves, you just need a bunch of rage regen and then you can spam as many vault instructs as you want. Um, I've been PMing this a lot. It's tricky, right? It's very tricky. So you might think that, oh, you just stack a bunch of rage on hit, right? And then you just get enough rage on hit to um, 
you're going to be able to spam multiples a second. This was the initial idea because it looked like you could be able to do that. The problem is the divide I mentioned earlier between rage on melee hit and rage on attack hit. So obviously rage on melee hit would only trigger off of the initial vol lightning strike strike. So a vol lightning strike, you, you, put, you basically do a normal lightning strike, right? But you just put a thing on the ground as you strike it. Um, so that strike itself, that does count as a melee hit. So technically that would trigger the rage on hit thing from melee hits. Um, but that doesn't happen very often and it's not very reliable. And then the rest of the vol strikes don't give you any rage uh, with just melee hit. It, then obviously if you stacked a bunch of attack hit, it would kind of work. But the problem is it's so limited in sources because you can get, I believe, four rage on attack hit from being a berserker. And now the rest of the berserker percentage, I, I, I think it's kind of garbage. So I, I, personally, if you like it, it's fine. I don't like it uh, from all the PBs I've done for this character at least. So I don't think that's very, very worth it. And then the rage support jump is another three. So at most... You can get, what, nine rage on attack hits, which is, you know, it's okay. Um, it will give you 18 rage a second, which is good, uh, certainly. It will let you, you know, cast two every two seconds. Like, it's, like, yeah, because they cost, with these, a single of all lightning strike costs about 13 to 15 rage, depending on how you uh, set things up. Um, so it's it's okay, that, but then, yeah, it's not it's not fantastic. The way you actually, I think, do this, and this is what I was PBing all day yesterday and trying to figure out how to make work in it, does kind of work, it's just a little bit awkward, is you use this this war cry. This is a new retaliation war cry, so when you take a savage hit, you can use this. Uh, this gives you uh, 3 rage per second per 5 power, counting up a maximum of 25, and then it gives you 25 to max rage. And now the reason why this is really good is because you can scale this with the war cry buff effect, and there's a lot of swords on this on tree. Um, you can get, you know, these nodes right here, there's some nodes up here. Where you can pretty easily, well, not easily, it's a lot of investment, but you can scale up to basically be more than 100%, so you can double this. Uh, this makes so that this gives you a lot of rage per second, especially if you use something like, uh, you know, Red Blade, Red Blade Banner or the Chieftain Node, which gives you infinite power. I believe this is the way you would do it, and this is what I've been trying to set up, because you can self proc this if you use. Uh, forbidden rights um, and you have low enough chaos rest to where that would do a savage hit to you that would then proc this and let you use it on command uh, this works i spent all of yesterday trying to pb it and i had a setup working on this character and i even leveled a marauder up to 95 or whatever um trying to set it up but I, first of all i don't think the more order setups that i try at least would be worth it because while we can get insane damage with this theoretically on one of those characters because you can certainly get it up a lot uh, but I just, everything else just fell apart when I was building it. Like, I very easily reached like four or five hundred million with this um, setup, just spamming Vault Lightning Strikes. I don't know if that would work in practice. It might crash, but theoretically, at least, that much damage. Uh, but I just couldn't fit any defenses in, and it was barely a character because you have to go all over the place for, uh, yeah, for the Warcry shit, and then like dagger nodes, and oh man, setting up those trees, which is a pain, and then you want like durations you want to go through Scion, and yeah, I just couldn't. I couldn't do it. Uh, maybe someone smarter than me will figure it out. And if you want to like um, spitball ideas back and forth, just you know DM me on Discord or something. I really would like to make this work, but uh, I just didn't find it worth it. And on this character, the problem is uh, self proccing uh, vengeful cry with forbidden right is actually really tricky because uh, I really don't want to give. If I gave up progenesis, it'd be really easy. But with progenesis, it's very hard to do it because you get so much mitigation and chaos res because yeah you need to have pretty low chaos res in order to have that thing do 50 percent of your max life so it, it it just became the setup of like i could self proc it if i didn't have progenesis up and i didn't have fortify up or if my fortify like it's just i don't know there were all these conditionals i couldn't get it working smoothly and it just didn't feel great unfortunately with my setup maybe i'll, I'll keep playing with this because this it's a very cool idea but it, yeah so far i haven't been able to solve it um and as for the marauder why i didn't like the marauder sentences so the initial thought was to go Berserker, but the problem with the Berserker is, like, I just I just hate Berserker. Uh, <laughs> uh, hold on, I'll show you in PUB here. So if you look at the Berserker, right, so the nodes you want from Berserker is this node, run one Rage on, me on attack hit, and this one, run Rage on attack hit. And then the other ones kind of just don't do anything. Like, getting some attack speed is nice, and then the Rage effect is, like, sort of nice, but you're spending all your Rage anyway, so you're not really ever at max Rage, so the Rage effect doesn't really do much to you. Um, so, like, those barely do anything. I mean, Astral Carnage is theoretically a bit more damage, but I think this node is, like, kind of garbage. Um, like, 4% more damage isn't that much anymore for an Ascendancy. Like, we have some insane Ascendancy points right now, and having to get take 10% more damage for it is just so such a bad deal but this at least does something uh compared to like the other nodes here like i don't think define pain does anything i don't think warbringer does anything for this build uh, flawless savagery is like pretty shit so yeah i don't know i don't like the berserker um the nice part of being more order is you can yoink this scion sun's roar uh, node in order to get more buff effect and infinite power to your war cries which is very powerful with the setup uh, that i'm talking about but that's pretty much it. And then Jug. Jug is really good right now. I think Jug is one of the best sentences in the game right now. Problem is Jug is too tanky. That I, I couldn't put together a, a setup with a Jug where I was able to get Forbidden Right to self-proc a Savage hit. <laughs> like, even without Unbreakable, it, it, it just wouldn't do it. Um, 
yeah, Jug is just kind of too too good <laughs> for that. So it was just like this miserable thing where like, sure, you can be a marauder and do this stuff, but like none of your sentence points do anything and it just felt bad. Maybe someone else is smarter than me can, can put it together. But I mean, yeah, you could do some strength stack stuff for it. Um, maybe that would work, but I don't know. That's a lot of slots used up for it. I know there's a setup with... Um, I forget the name of it. There's, there's the like belt that makes it so that uh, you like max rage when you lose temp chains or whatever, and then you can have use the ring. Uh, there's like a combo of that it's like how people used to do infinite of all struck spam back in like ultimatum and stuff. Um, this works. This still works this league. I, I've seen people do it and I've read up on it. It, it. it works fine. It's just like it takes a belt salt and a ring salt and some other investment. I would like to get hate forge. If I'm gonna use hate forge, I wanted to work with mage blood. Um, I think giving up mage blood is like too much because I want to be zoomy. So uh, that is the the thing I'm trying to work around. But yeah, so far I have not been able to solve hate forge unfortunately. Uh, but I'm gonna keep trying. Uh, but even without it, I think this build feels fantastic. It's just that if if it got working, then the build would kind of go insane because you'd get like your single target would multiply insanely well, um, and you would be a god uh <laughs> but yeah so that's you know it's a good carrot to have in front of me but i've not managed to fully get this working just yet, unfortunately i would have loved to start this video off showing off you know 50 of these down on the ground all you know at the same time and just crashing my pc but uh yeah while that's theoretically possible i again i got this working on this character uh, yesterday while i was trying it out it's just a little too clunky right now um but maybe um you know give me a week or two maybe if someone else has any ideas we can we can do something with this um but super high potential there so that is there's an end game goal but for now this character i think works super well super super zoomy um feels great defensively i think is super sound good recovery good mitigation um yeah man i really like it uh, again it's not like it's not immortal, it doesn't do infinite damage, but it does a lot of damage, and it's very tanky, so... <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I like it a lot. I think it's one of those fun mapping builds I've done in a while. Um, yeah, I'm gonna keep playing this. I'll do it on stream if you wanna check it out. Uh, it's in the description, as always, and I'll also include the uh, sort of step-by-step -step POBs in there. Uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, maybe some of you will play something like this and enjoy it. A lot of these items are pretty... I mean, obviously, I, right now, I've sort of invested a lot in this character, but still, uh, you'd be surprised how cheap a lot of these other stuff are. Like, squires are still very cheap right now. They're like five div each or something last time I checked. Uh, the honest, I think, haven't really even gone up right yet. It's quite easy to get good corruption on them very cheaply. Um, Mogs autos, if you want to use those, I think those are cheaper than ever. Those are like under a div. I think those are crazy cheap. Um, so you can get, use one of the early POBs and set, set a version of this up that still clears tier 70 super well and feels good. I think for Lightning Strike, this is one of the, like, I, I'd be hard pressed to think of a setup. I don't know, maybe there's something you could do with Tinctures, because tincture give, Tinctures do give you a lot of damage, so maybe you could do something like that, but I think this, this setup is really sound at least, um, so I've really been enjoying it, and hopefully you will too. I'll keep doing videos on this, crafting upgrades and stuff. We'll have some crafting videos up, I know some of you have been, been itching for those, I'll, I'll, do, I'll keep doing them, or I'll start doing them again, I guess it has been a while. Uh, as I do, as I do some upgrades again, we need to craft a really juicy ring in order to get Nimbus working, so that might be a crafting video. That could be fun. Uh, but yeah, all right. So that's it. I'm gonna end the video with uh, the full footage of the map clear. Maybe show some shaper or something, some bosses. We'll see what I put in. I'm not sure right now, but uh, yeah. Thanks so much for watching. As always, um, if you like the video, you can do the subscribe thing for the YouTube stuff. I don't know. I'm quite happy with the viewers I do have, but you know, hey, if you like it, you like it. All right. So yeah, I'll do. I'll be live if you want to see it in action. And uh, yeah. Good times. This league is a lot of fun. Uh, man, there's so much cool stuff you can do. Uh, so much broken stuff as well. And it's like broken in a fun way. It's not, it's not like Crucible where like it was really broken, the Crucible trees, but like none, most of them weren't that fun. It was just like, oh, the numbers are higher. You know, there's a fair bit of that this league too, but there's some really fun stuff. Like I think this enchant is so fun. Like I would say some of the other enchants are maybe like numerically like superior. Like there's some crazy just numerical enchants, like the, the element lounge one or whatever, but uh, this one's just so fun. You know, you can do so much with it. Uh, but yeah, all right. So yeah, thanks everyone. I'll be back in the next video. All right, see you guys.